everyone. Um, we'll give it a minute until it's two, um, but we are going to go ahead and um, get started shortly. I'm here with Brian, and today we are going to talk about how Run Sign Up customers can use Ticket Sign Up. This is going to be recorded. Um, if you have questions, you can put them in the questions module. Either Brian, Johanna, or I will try to answer during the webinar, and we'll go through any additional questions at the end. Um, this is going to be a pretty high-level overview, so if there's anything else you want to see at the end, we are going to do a demo, and we can dig into more details at the end. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the Brian. Thanks, Allison. Before I get started, just to make sure, could we get a couple people to maybe just put in the chat that they can hear us and see the presentation? It's always good to make sure we're being here, <laughs> being heard and seen. So let's just see that. Just waiting for confirmation before we get started. Heard and yep. seen. Thank we're you. Good. Wonderful. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started today. So today, as Allison mentioned, it's a very high level overview. Um, we're going to talk about um, how some of our customers are using Ticket Sign Up. We're going to talk about how to sell tickets with Ticket Sign Up. We're going to have a basic introduction to Ticket Sign Up. And then Allison has graciously set up a demo for us to um, use some of the more interesting tools. So that's going to be our check-in app as well as our point of sale capabilities. So she's going to actually do a live demo on her phone and fingers crossed everything works perfectly. So um, we have some fabulous customers who have some really, really cute pages here. So Allison strategically picked the cutest pages to put on the front. So um, if you're not aware, I'm actually from uh, Richmond, Virginia. So this is my local SPCA. And um, they actually do a, a dog jog with us, a 5K. And so it's a 5K, but then there's also roughly like a one mile uh, jog with your dog around the, uh, the block where the SPCA is. Um, so this is an example on the left-hand side. And then they have the fur ball. That's another example of a page. So these are really cute pages. And these are pretty typical of what you might see with some of the nonprofits that you may be involved with or you might help with. Um, these are, you know, it, it, there might be a um, a type of ticket like general admission, um, VIP, or they might be buying it by the table. So that's one example of how some customers are using ticket sign up. Another one um, is uh, WXPN. So we're really excited that WXPN and their uh, their festival are working with us this weekend. We also are really worried that it's going to pour rain this weekend. <laughs> so so like if you could encourage the rain to like hold off this weekend, uh, that'd be great. Um, so another one of their events is Noncom, which is a convention. So if you're involved with any sort of, you know, small, medium-sized convention, uh, where you're like, hey man, I really wish I could use um, more of Run Sign Up tools, Ticket Sign Up might be a perfect fit for that, where we can collect the uh, tickets, make additional sales, um, collect donations, you know, things like that. So there's quite a bit of flexibility in Ticket Sign Up, and these are some examples of, again, existing customers utilizing the platform. So the Lopit Foundation, um, they are one of our uh, wintertime customers. They do events year round, but they are definitely one of our busiest customers in the wintertime. And they have a number of um, interesting events. So they have uh, snow skiing, uh, cross country skiing. Uh, they also have um, Luminary Lopit, Lopit, where you actually get to go around in the snow and they've got it all lit up at night. It's a really unique opportunity. And I think you can even have a beer afterwards. Uh, and then this year, uh, well, actually in 2024, they're having the World Championships um, at their facility, and they sold tickets. Uh, and those tickets sold out. Allison, was it within the same day that they sold out all their tickets? Yeah, and they used caps because they had to limit um, both the number of general free admission tickets, but also their VIP and and seated um, options as well. Yeah, it was really neat to get to watch that one because it was like middle of July and very hot and there was a big ski event going on, which is kind of counterintuitive, but people are really excited about the World Championships um, being here in the U.S. in 2024 and uh, they sold a lot of tickets very quickly. So Tunnel to Towers Foundation, uh, this is another organization that is a nonprofit. Um, they have a, uh, a really neat uh, Bravest barbecue dinner or lunch that they're doing with us. Um, so 
what they really enjoy about our system is the ability to not only um, sell tickets, but also uh, solicit donations as well. So um, this is a, a parks and recreation, and we're starting to have many parks and recreation groups coming to us for um, what we're generally hearing being called special events. So those special events are outside of like the, maybe like the weekly classes for pottery or other things that might be regular occurrences. In this case, they have a haunted trail. And so at that haunted trail, you can sign up for um, a particular night and they have say adult and child tickets available. Uh, and they're gonna be utilizing our check-in app as well as point of sale capabilities. So um, people can show up if they don't already have a ticket, make a ticket without having to necessarily um, go through and collect cash and things like that. They're also utilizing our um, photo platform, which is another great feature where you can upload all the great photos from your event and we'll host them at no charge. So this is Christmas Island in Burnside, Kentucky. So they work with us for their Jingle Bell 5K. They also have uh, Christmas Island's light show. So we work with a number of light shows. Some of them are light shows where you walk through them and then some of them are drive through. In this case, this is a drive through. And so you're buying a ticket for your vehicle and then they're scanning that ticket and your vehicle is going through. They do have some complexity in this and that um, depending on like the size of the vehicle, like if you're bringing a bus or a limousine uh, or a regular family vehicle, there's different pricing for that. So this is um, very much in our roots here. Um, so track meets and other sporting events or parking. So these two events are really high end track meets. So we have the Festival of Miles where there's many pro um, runners that are showing up to this event and going after their personal best. And then on the right hand side, we have the Adidas uh, Outdoor Track Nationals for high school athletes. Um, the track nationals had a really great attendance. I think they had over 5,000 spectators purchasing tickets uh, and it really helped the organizer um, dramatically cut down on cash as well as being able to collectly, correctly collect uh, sales tax. Uh, whereas in the past, they weren't, they had a lot of trouble with um, some of these things with their previous vendors. So we were really happy to be able to help with a really cool event as well as um, get them in compliance with sales tax. So why ticket sign up? Um, so the ticket sign up platform and the run sign up platform are built on the same infrastructure. So um, they are separate functionalities, but they're all based on the same core infrastructure. So what does that mean? Is that uh, the, the website capabilities that you see in tickets, we're actually in the process of moving that over to races. Um, the email functionality, we actually tested that in tickets before we moved it over to races. Um, as well as like a lot of our um, new features that we're trying out, we're actually trying them on tickets because we've got real live customers um, who are utilizing these features, can give us some you know quick and useful feedback before we roll it out to a, a larger group of people in races. So it's a great, you know, we put it on our test server, then we move it to tickets and then we move it to races. Um, so if you're using ticket sign up, you're actually on the cutting edge of everything we do. So the other really nice thing about the platform is, is that yes, when you go to ticket sign up, it's asking you for the, your email and password, but that's the same email and password for run sign up. So you don't have to have a separate login. You may think that, but actually you don't have to. So it makes it really easy to get started. Um, you can use the same payment accounts that you've used with run sign up. So if it's the exact same entity and you want it to go to the exact same bank account, it will do that, no trouble. And it will uh, show you how much revenue you have coming in for the race that you have with us, as well as how much you have in the ticket event. And it's it's separated within that deposit. Now, the other thing that's really unique is that we support, so if you have a legal entity, say I'm a parks and rec department and I have a bank account for my 5K, and then I wanna have a bank account for my Christmas light show, we can still have the same legal entity, but multiple payment accounts as well. And we've had a number of customers who have needed that where it's like, hey, this actually needs to go into a different bank account and we can support that as well. So um, many of our customers um, use run sign up, but they also use Eventbrite for their events. So why ticket sign up from a pricing standpoint? Well. If you're not aware, um, Eventbrite has made some fairly significant changes to their pricing. Um, and what we have on the screen is to our best knowledge, so it may not be correct. But generally speaking, they're going to a subscription model where you have to pay either monthly or by event. Um, 
you also have to pay for their email system and they also charge per per ticket. So this can really add up in fees um, over time. Uh, so the more events that you do with them, the more fees you pay. Whereas with ticket sign up, we charge per transaction. There's no subscription. There's no email fee. And so and one of the more important things is that with tickets, we tend to see more people sign up together. So our pricing per transaction becomes even more advantageous to the customer because they, they're getting a little tired of paying you know, really high fees. And they're probably emailing you. If you're using Eventbrite, they probably had a number of customers email you saying like, hey, I'm paying $15 in fees. You know, is there a way, can I get a discount? Can I pay with cash? They're looking to avoid paying, which isn't to your benefit because the more people that sign up online, the less work you have to do on site. The other really important thing is that we do offer volume discounts. So if you do over 5,000 paid tickets a year, um, we will discount our pricing 20%. And if you do even larger amounts, we offer uh, scaled discounts. And that is outlined on our ticket sign up pricing page that kind of shows you like, let's say you may have a balloon festival that gets 50,000 people. We definitely have discounted pricing for that. Um, and there's also opportunities for you to um, generate revenue from that if you do these very large events, because you may say, hey, you know, processing fees are an important source of revenue for us. Since we're talking to run sign up customers today, um do run sign up registrations count towards that volume discount absolutely so um if you're doing a thousand registrations a year and ten thousand tickets we would combine those together to get the total and uh, give you your discount or rebate amount so this is we're outlining this because we can we we get this question a lot and we like to be transparent on pricing um, the ticket sign-up fees are exactly the same as the run sign-up fees. So there is no difference between them. And the most important thing to understand is that we're charging per cart, what we call per transaction, not per ticket. So like the number one kind of objection or question I get is like, oh, well, it's 6% plus a dollar. And that's they're in their minds, they're saying that's per ticket. We're absolutely not doing that. Um, and and what we found in our averages is the average is three tickets per cart. So if you look at it, you know, that is going to save that person buying three tickets right out of the gate, two dollars. Since you're if you're perceiving it as a dollar a ticket, it would be significantly cheaper. And that's because we believe that we don't get charged by the credit card companies that way. So we think that we should have our fee structure that follows the way the credit card companies charge us. So types of events that use ticket sign up, um, we put this here to hopefully um, maybe open some ideas of the types of events that you might be interested um, in trying ticket sign up for. So one of the events I wanted to call out is we work with a number of sports commissions that, um, so their goal is sports tourism. So they want um, softball tournaments, they want baseball tournaments, lacrosse tournaments. Um, if you work with events like that and you need to sell spectator passes, uh, we absolutely can help you with that. If you work with those events, but you're not selling spectator passes, but you need to sell parking, we absolutely can help you with that. Uh, I mentioned earlier, parks and recs and chambers of commerce, those special events that you're putting on, many of them are being encouraged to use their parks and rec platform or their um, chamber masters, another one that we've heard of. Those are all fine solutions for maybe smaller events or less complex events. When you get those larger, more complex events, uh, ticket sign up can really simplify the process. The, and the part that Allison's going to demo to you is our uh, event day technology. It's just really easy. You're downloading an app, you're scanning QR codes, you've got data in there that tells you how many people showed up, how many people you checked in. It really makes uh, your life easier. If you're putting on a race that has a festival associated with it, ticket sign up would be a great fit. We'd love to speak with you. Uh, we have a number of nonprofits that put on golf tournaments. We highlighted those galas earlier. Any sort of nonprofit event. Um, one of my favorite ones is that we have a, a blue jean ball where everyone wears different um, like blue jean jackets and, and nice blue jeans out to, a, to like a gala type event. Um, any of these types of events, we can help you with ticket signups. We've um, visited at a number of uh, conferences where um, we've met with breweries, wineries and distilleries. Many of them do uh, concerts. Um, they might do uh, festivals, anything that's happening at a brewery, um, winery, distillery, please invite us. And then if you happen to have tickets, that's great. Um, so uh, if your event has season passes or event passes, 
uh, we actually have season pass technology. So if, if you're looking for an alternative solution, um, we definitely could help you with season passes. I mentioned earlier, just being excited about the world championship, world cross country championships for skiing. Um, we've had voting contests. We've had um, duck contests where they're actually kind of dumping ducks into the river and you have a, um, you, you own one of the ducks and if your duck gets to the finish line first, you win. Uh, some of the more high volume stuff that we're doing is what we call timed ticketing. And Allison's gonna show a little bit of that. So timed ticketing is if you have an event where uh, you have a capacity, say, let's say 100 people every 15 minutes, um, we have the ability to set it up so that you can have not only your time selection, but also your caps. Um, this works really well for Halloween haunts and holiday light shows or anything else that is time and capacity limited. Um, we also are starting the process of um, going after bookings. So bookings would be, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do is uh, like kayaking. Um, so if I'm on vacation, I want to book uh, a kayak. So I got to book it for the morning session or the afternoon session. Um, or do I need multiple because my family's coming with me? Uh, we, we've, built, we've built the technology to handle that. Uh, we've met with a number of escape rooms, which you have different types of rooms. Again, time slots or morning and afternoon sessions, we can support that. Uh, and then later this year, uh, we, if you're involved with like a garden or um, something that has like a membership option, not only could we sell the ticket, we also can validate their membership and upsell them a membership if they're not currently a member. So we put two pictures in here, Jake and Sarah, they are um, our ticket signup team. So you may get an email from them, you may get a phone call from them. They're absolutely part of our company. Please answer their call, please answer their email. Um, they'd love to talk to you about ticket sign up and that's why they're reaching out is if they believe there might be a um, an event that you're associated with that might be a good fit for ticket sign up so at this point i'm going to hand it over to allison yeah um sounds good so ticket sign up is different than registration um, ticketing is different than registration one of the things um, that we talk a lot about to differentiate it for our run sign of customers is that you're really focused on tickets and not people. So when you're doing registration for a race or a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising event, you need information about those people because you have all these downstream things that you're gonna do like assigned bibs, times, results. You need all this stuff about your fundraisers. Um, so you're really focused on the individuals. But with tickets, it's much lighter weight. You don't really care who's buying the tickets. Um, and one of the big things um, that you'll see here, I've got an example of a timed entry event right here. Um, is that you don't have an account or login um, when you're buying your tickets. You, you're not prompted to create a password by default. Um, we've also added Apple Pay and Apple Wallet to tickets. Um, like Brian said, we rolled it out on Ticket Sign Up first. Those are now available on Run Sign Up as well. But it makes it really fast and easy to purchase a ticket. And at the end of the day, optimizing that ticket purchase path to be as fast as possible for people to get their tickets is really important. Um, ticket sign up has a lot of the same features as run sign up. I was kind of just brain dumping on this slide, but there's so many things that when you um, go in and you start creating your first ticket event and you look at the dashboard, look at the website, you're going to feel really confident that you know how to do everything because it's a lot of the same functionality as in run sign up. Some of these features are a little bit differentiated when you go into tickets um, because they are built around ticket purchase rather than a registration. Remember, tickets, not people. Um, so some of it might seem a bit more lighter weight, but a lot of the run sign up customers that create their events on ticket sign up find it really easy to navigate and really familiar um, to use. There are some differences, um, like we talked about, no logins, passwords by default, um, some of the other differences are reports. So when you're talking about tickets, you have a purchase, which is a cart, and you've got individual tickets, maybe store items associated with that. And so you've got different report views of both your purchases and individual tickets. And again, you've got flexibility with how you collect information. We have information collection fields, custom questions that work really nice for galas where you might want every person's information, but generally you don't need that. We also have some advanced ticket features that are very specific to tickets. Um, these help us accommodate really advanced events that do more complex setups like a gala, a golf tournament, or a large timed entry type of ticket event. 
Um, the two things I have highlighted on the other side of my screen are website V2 and store and warehouse. And the reason I've bolded these are that they are coming to races. So like email V2, we've been upgrading certain parts of our platform and we're making them common across tickets and races. And what that means is when we add these new features, like I think a couple of weeks ago, we added a three column component to the email builder. They're automatically available in races and tickets. It's not additional development overhead for us. It's highly efficient to roll out new features to every customer on our platform. And so what we're doing in races is migrating um, and upgrading these features that a ton of customers use um, over time. So the one that we're actively working on right now, our website, so we'll dig into that a little bit more today. And then um, store and warehouse, which is really um, how we're calling our inventory sharing across events capability, are going to come later on um, in 2024. Um, like we talked about, today we handle time ticketing um, and missions, bookings really well. Um, a lot of haunts are using us this fall. That's kind of the big customer focus that we have um, at the moment, getting um, haunts open with ticket sales and ready for their events. Um, so you see these different components we have in tickets, like a calendar, um, as well as options to select your time slot and ticket type. Um, this is a really good solution. It works really well today. We have a lot of really large events using us for these types of complex time ticketing events. But what we're working on is a patent pending calendar driven um, interface for admissions, time ticketing and bookings. And this is really gonna set us up really well um, to go into more um, year round type of ticketing as well as just be able to accommodate and make it easier for both directors and ticket purchasers um, to buy tickets for something like a haunt and to manage all of that on the back end. Um, so it's just kind of um, going, it's a, it's a project that's happening on the side right now, and we'll be kind of slowly announcing this um, over the coming weeks. But this is really exciting, it sets us up for a really exciting future um, to go after even more types of ticket events and accommodate them really well. With that, we are gonna go into demo. Um, I'm gonna be demoing a pretty simple ticket event um, just so that you guys kind of get a sense of what the platform is like. And I think we've gone through a lot of examples today of these more complex setups that we can really accommodate well and, um, but just want you guys to get familiar with the platform. Um, so ticketsignup.io, um, this is the website same as the Run Sign Up website, you've got an option to create an event or schedule a call. You can talk to Jake and Sarah. But when you go to create an event, it's really similar to creating your race. You're in a friendly wizard and you are just entering the basics of your event. And again, all of this is going to be able to be edited um, once you finish going through the wizard. Um, you're going to be able to change, update, whatever you want to do. The last step of the wizard is where you're going to set up your payment account. So we showed a screenshot of this earlier, but I just wanted you to see um, you can use existing payment accounts. So I'm an owner on these two funding accounts in our platform. I can also request access to other um, funding accounts where I'm a director on the event, but I don't actually own the funding account. And then, of course, you have options to set up a new payment account. Like Brian talked about, we can support multiple funding accounts. Um, for the same legal entity, or maybe you're just working with a different organization and a different tax ID and need to create a new one. Um, so once you finish this wizard, what you get is a dashboard and you get a website. Um, so this is the front end website and I'm showing this to you on my desktop and I actually have my phone pulled up on the side here so that we can show um, both the purchase path on a phone, which is how people commonly buy tickets, as well as our apps later on. Um, so what I'm going to show is just how I would buy a ticket. Um, we have ticket tiles. They have fast, quick purchase options. There's also the sticky buy tickets option at the top. I changed all of my prices to a dollar because I'm actually going to do a transaction. Um, one of the nice things that we accommodate is a store and you can upsell additional items. And some of the different options that you have here are specific to tickets. So we handle variants really well. So if you have um, multiple options for an item like color or size, um, another option is with a variant pricing. So for example, you can have um, 16 ounce beer stein cost $15 and 24 ounce cost $22. So you can really e easily um, add uh, pricing. Um, and then you can sell additional 
items that are just single variant, no variant options. And then you get to the checkout page. And one of the really nice things with this is Apple Pay. So I'm not entering any of my own information. I am just going to click pay now and it is going to process my payment. And that is done. And we have a little pop-up so I can text somebody to come and join me. That's one of our new social share options that's just on by default. And one of the really nice things that I really like and I think makes our event day tools even more powerful is you have this option to add to Apple Wallet. And it's done really nicely. Like you can see next to the event website, it's branded the same and everything. It has the date. And Apple Wallet is really nice because a lot of people have those notifications automatically enabled. So the day of the event, I'm going to get a little reminder on my phone um, just through Apple Wallet that I have the Oktoberfest coming up. So I can add that and we're done. And we're going to go into the check-in app a bit later. Um, but what I want to do now is go into um, the ticket event. Oh, actually, I want to show you the website a little bit. So this is the website. This is just a general homepage. You'll see here I've got um, a slideshow. And I also have some additional pages that I've added with content. And you can add drop downs as well. Um, so it's a really nice way to accommodate content. One of the things that you may notice is that I've disabled this banner. Um, that's like a default heading that we have on races. It's hidden here. So we've introduced a lot more flexibility to this. So I'm going to go into the ticket event dashboard. And I think this probably looks familiar to a lot of our run sign up customers. Um, you can see what's happening on your site. You can see you have insights and understand how many tickets you've sold, where they're coming from. I've got my total ticket sales at the top here. Um, one of the features I did want to point out a little bit more is the website builder because this is something that we are actively working on to bring over to races. Um, this is the website builder. This is our next generation of content management and how you can add um, features to your website. So within a page, you have options to add new sections and within sections, you can add components. Um, so you can choose from the library, add video, um, add images in different ways. There's a whole lot to select from. Um, the other thing you can do is add menu items. So you'll see on the side here, these are the menu items that um, we added to the website ahead of time. And to add a new menu item, I'm just going to add a new drop down to this more info. I'm going to add a new page and it's going to be called Contact Us. And now I have this new Contact Us page. And I can add single or two column uh, sections and I can add uh, the contact form. So it's really powerful because you've got this mix of static content that you can add, like your images, your YouTube videos, text in different formats, but you've also got dynamic component um, components that you can add, like a contact form, which is based on your event. You can add a countdown clock that is going to event start time. Um, so it's a really powerful tool. And if we look here, we now have our contact form where we can um, ask the event questions and we have a countdown clock. I set this to 2024 and you'll see here, this is all living on this new page that we built um, called Contact Us. And it's just a really easy way to manage website content. We're pretty excited about bringing that over to races. Um, so I did a ticket purchase just now. And so what I want to do is I want to find that purchase. There's two ways I can do that. One is by searching. Um, because I use my Apple Pay, it pulls in my purchaser name. So we've got my information there, um, even though I didn't type any of it. Um, so this is a way to quickly pull up a ticket. This is great for handling like customer service requests. Um, the other way you can access a uh, a uh, ticket purchase is by going to the reports page, and this is all of my um, purchases. When you click into manage, this is really similar to races where you've got options to provide customer service. So like if I wanted to upgrade my ticket, like I actually want VIP, I can transfer those tickets. I can issue a refund. I can add items to this. So it's really powerful, easy to use management tools. Um, but what we're going to do is actually go over to the check-in app now. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, so this is a check-in app. I'm actually in the event already, but it looks just like the race day check-in app. It is its own app. It's called the Ticket Sign Up Ticket app. So you have to download something else, but it's the same way where you'll set um, a password on your event and you'll be able to access your event via password. So I've already done that um, and I've downloaded my event data here. Um, what we're gonna do is pretend that I showed up with my Apple wallet. I can't do this because I only have one phone here and I'm using it. Um, but what you're going to be able to do with the ticket app is really similar to the race day check-in app. You're gonna be able to scan tickets as people come up um, sorry, it's a little blurry. And that's automatically going to pull it up. So I only have one ticket in this purchase, but one of the nice things, and I'll show you in a minute, is you can check in some or all the tickets at one time. That's really nice if you've got somebody that purchased like eight tickets and they're arriving in groups. Um, but that's all you have to do. And you can go right back to the camera to scan the next ticket. One of the things that people like is you can actually search for a ticket by name and you can pull that up. So that's like a quick thing. Um, but this kind of shows that capability to check in some, but not all the tickets. So we've checked in one. One of the things you'll notice is that on this event, um, because I have store items, I have options to fulfill store items. And you can do that um, when you are on site checking people in with their tickets. But what we've seen a lot of our events do is they have like a separate merch table. So one of the things that I really like about the check-in app is you can create different configurations based on the role that your volunteers are gonna be playing. So right now, this is programmed to be um, specifically for ticket check-in. So those are the people who are checking in tickets, making sure you have those purchased. Um, let's pretend we have a merch table and those people are just responsible for fulfilling those store items that were purchased. So what you're going to be able to do is change the configuration on any app. And <clears throat> this is going to make it go right to the fulfillment screen. And we're just going to fulfill the store item for the beer stein. And so you've got these different functionalities that the app can play. It can work really well for just checking in tickets or it can work really well for fulfilling store items on site. So that makes it really powerful. Um, one of the other things that we wanted to talk through for um, event day is on site sales. So the number one recommendation that we have for that, and hopefully you can see this, is a QR code on signs. And it's really easy. I printed this out right before the webinar. You make it in Canva. We give you a page on here where you have QR codes to your event. And all I did was I made this large and I copied it and put it into Canva, made a nice little poster. And we saw how fast and easy that was for me to purchase those tickets and store items on my own phone. I think a lot of people feel really comfortable with that. Um, and the power of that is it eliminates lines. It, makes your operations at the gates really, really fast for any event. Um, that being said, we do have a point of sale um, solution and we are using a square reader um, for this. So it's just a cheap piece of hardware. It's like $50 to buy one of these. Maybe it's even less. And you can actually sell tickets on site with that. And there's really different ways you can handle that. So um, we're gonna go in and show what this looks like. And again, if you don't want everyone selling tickets, you're actually gonna be able to configure this to only show check-in, like you don't have to let people sell tickets. Um, but what this is doing is it's giving you a view of exactly what you would see if you were buying online. But um, instead of having an option to um, pay with Apple Pay, there's actually just now going to be this button that's called Pay Now with Square. And so what that does is it kicks it over to the square reader. And what you can do is just tap and that's gonna go through. And so I have no receipt. And one of the nice things you can do is if you've got a printer and they're typically printers that are used for bib labels, I have mine here, is you can actually print out the ticket that was just purchased. And this works for store items as well. And the nice thing about it is it has a QR code. So I like this because it's really flexible. 
One of the options would be don't print, just automatically check in that ticket because that's the same process. But if people are purchasing items or tickets and they're gonna go somewhere else to get them redeemed or checked in, then you just give them this and they'll take this over to that spot. It'll get scanned by this app and they're good to go. Um, so the Event Day app is really powerful. And one of the things that we really like about it um, is that the same team that built the Race Day Check-In app is actually building out this app. And so it's really fun because there's so much knowledge and talent of how events work on Event Day. Um, and it's really fun to like move quickly with that team to build new solutions to help our events. Um, so that's gonna wrap up our quick demo today. And just to wrap up, go to ticketsignup.io. Um, so that is our website. There's a QR code that goes to the website. Um, there are options. You can either go in, you can create an event, you can play around with that. You can also schedule a call. If you don't want Jake and Sarah to call you right away, you can actually set up time on one of their calendars. You'll be prompted to do that after you fill in your information. Um, so they'll call you at a specific time that works for you. Um, so with that, um, you guys can feel free to put any questions into the chat and um, I don't know, Brian, did you have anything else that you wanted to say to wrap this up? I'm very happy that everything worked in the demo. The <laughs> yeah. phone, the printer, everything worked perfectly. So that's great. So it's a good day. It's hard, If you don't know, it's really hard to set these things up and demo them in front of other people. So. But it is pretty easy. Um, and the nice thing is that hardware is pretty cheap and you also don't need it. You can just do QR codes because that yeah, is absolutely. what most of our events are doing these days. Well, I don't see any questions in the box, but we can give people a little bit more time to ask questions. But I do think that if you made it to this part of the webinar um, and you're not sure what to do next, um, feel free to go to Ticket Sign Up, um, click Create Your Event. And you can just kind of go through the process and create the event. And if you've used Run Sign Up, I think it'll be a very intuitive process for you. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Brian, I think you're out of the shot a little bit. You got to move to your right. No, you're right. Brian, you're right. Okay. Thank you all for watching. This is the end of the video. If you'd like to see more videos from us, Please subscribe, click the notification bell, and then all. That'll keep you up to date when we post new videos. If you'd like to click the thumbs up button and let us know you enjoyed this kind of content, we'd appreciate that. We'll see you in the next one. Brian, Brian, you're, you're not even close to where I was saying.